Hello, Dark Ones, my old friends. Welcome to a brand new episode of Listen with the Lights Off, a radio horror show. I'm your host, Jennifer D. Corley. There's finally a break in the fevered temperature in spite of our state being on fire, and the nighttime breeze brings just enough chill to raise the slightest of goosebumps. The barks of that neighborhood mutt down the street take on a new, ominous tone, reminiscent of the dog that warns of trouble ahead at the start of nearly every horror movie ever captured on celluloid, tape, and SD card. You might just hear one of those foreboding cries in today's very special one-story episode of Listen With The Lights Off. We are bringing you a tale full of portentous discord, numinous catharsis, and divine calm plot. Author Drew Andrews' layered piece entitled Holy Seven Pathway to All Light and Being is so swollen with prescient analogies and grotesque character diving that I believe it merits multiple listens to fully respect and cherish it, like a fine seven-layer dip. So bring forth unto yourself a plethora of snack foods and beverages, turn up the volume, and for God's sake, listen to animals when they warn you of doom. Featuring the talents of Arthur Psalm and John Padilla, behold, Holy Seven Pathway to All Light and Being. Holy Seven Pathway to All Light and Being by Drew Andrews. Nineteen eighty seven in the Tehachapi Mountains. Dan spoke into the night. And they could be right on you, right there, breathing on your neck hairs, and you wouldn't even know it. Pumping diesel in your truck, season ticket box seats, shoes up on the rails. You wouldn't know. Ordering rare ribeye at the steakhouse bar, jumping hopscotch outside your house. Building the neighbor kids' erector set, picking out new pumas, pouring white vinegar and baking soda into homemade volcanoes, laughing your ass off during family hour with Mr. Rogers. Folks, like I've said it before, you just can't trust anyone these days. Not the government, not your friends, not your families, nobody. Dan huffed to Parliament, exhaled onto the mic. <sighs> Folks, the thing is, the human-alien hybrid is a genuine, real threat to us homo sapiens, and the crooked government just won't say nothing and nothing about it. Thanks again, Ronnie Reagan. Go back to your Hollywood caviar and go back to your crummy old westerns. Tell us what your wife's astrologer is charting up about how great Russia is again. Dan punched the laugh track button a few times. That's all for tonight, folks. Tune in tomorrow night on Dan Buchanan's Late Night Live Air Neon Confession Booth, where I'll be breaking it all down one more time about these reptilian and human hybrids and how even you just might be one yourself. He flipped off the microphone, leaned back into his captain's chair, and slammed the play button down on his hi-fi studio tape player, real spinning the opening riff of Smoke on the Water. Always hot till the day it snows. 11 p.m. Gotta build that swamp cooler. There wasn't a decent all-night diner around. No real working air conditioning. But at least there were no city folk banging around every day. Just blanket blue sky by day and seas of constellation at night. Dan already had the slick life. Ventura born in the early 50s. In the late 70s, hustling songs and theme show jingles all along Sunset Boulevard. A little bit of luck and commercial placement cash hop. Then enough was enough with tree hugging and L.A. livings and L.A. lovins, enough of Mexi Coke and Mexi weed, flax and avocado and alfalfa sandwiches, Scientologist and star cross singer songwriters, and Laurel Canyon entertainment law types. He bailed on his own ghost and hip folks let go a lifetime back. He decided he wasn't done for the night. 
It's still five o'clock and the truth's somewhere. He punched the generator back on, flipped switches and lights, blasted the volume past the dial's end, and cued tape of Hendrix's version of All Along the Watchtower. Buckle up for a bonus surprise, real, real late edition of the late night live air neon confession booth. I thought it was finished, but I just can't stop tonight. Let's give him some more hell. I'm having a blast, and I got more to shout from out here in Tehachapi, California, on this Saturday night, September 23rd. The millennia is 1900, and the año is 80 freaking seven. The song faded out, and Dan's voice came back on air. Quiet, bringing it down, as if about to let out a secret. Folks, you know, I was going to share this news later on this week, but, well, let's check out some snippets right now from what just might be one of our epic's most significant interviews of all time. I'm, I'm serious. I recorded a bit last night. Let's see what we got. Dan flicked on the Betamax audio channel, letting out an ear-piercing and tone-deaf East Coast voice at 106 decibels. It was very easy. I was tired. Clad me wet in cold hair, breaking through the speakers at peak volume while Dan grimaced and ducked the volume fader to its proper spot. And I think a lot of people are tired of watching other countries ripping off the United States. They laugh at us. Behind our backs, they laugh at us because of our own stupidity and the the leaders, it's ridiculous. I have no intention of running for president, but I'd like the point to get across that we have a great country, but it's not going to be great for long if we're going to continue. Dan queued up the crowd applause track and pounded the green button a few times. There you have it. The words of the last great American hero, Donald J. Trump. Some highlights from last night's TV interview with, of all people, Larry Jester. I mean, oh, excuse me, Larry... I can barely say it, King. The Donald laying it down on his ass, right on prime time. You know how much I hate all these talking puppets on the mainstream news, but finally, here it is, the media elite getting a dose of real American talk. We love a man who tells it like it is, don't we? You never see this straight talk anywhere these days. You know, Trump says it over and over and over again that he ain't running for president next year, but I don't believe him. He's just testing. Feeling. Donald Trump has more gut feeling in him than all those other doofuses combined in Congress. Who needs him? October 22nd, in New Hampshire, mark my words, I'll say it right now, Donald J. Trump will announce that he's running for president October 22nd, and he will run like a bat out of hell and win it real big next year in 1988 and turn this nation into a new breed of end Trumpeneurs, just like we need Bring back great leaders who will cut through the... The yellow call line began to flash. What the... Blinking call line. He had never seen this before. Dan wasn't even sure if taking a call on this board was possible. Uh, well, uh, sorry for the confusion over here. I guess, well, it, uh, looks like we have a caller. Immediately nervous, Dan sat up and popped his knuckles. His finger lingered on the yellow call button before he finally clicked in. Hello there, on the air live with Dan Buchanan. A high and thin and shrill sound pierced Dan's speakers, feeding back into his desk mic, flooding his trailer's frame with the sound of radio static and loudspeaker instructions, unintelligible overhead, lost in some far off choir hall. Indiscernible sounds bled through the phone speaker, background sounds of a city, and a detached voice, sounding as if calling from a payphone, broke through in disjointed dispatch. This was for you, all peoples gathered, honor the witness, overthrow. All noise suddenly cut 
but for a solitary phone dial tone shaking the speaker cones until Dan finally fumbled at the yellow button. He sat in silence, unsure of just what happened. He faded up Norn Greenbaum's spirit in the sky. That's it for tonight. The first tape came the next morning, September 24th. A white, semi-cardboard envelope stuffed into the mailbox. Scrawled on the envelope in magic marker the words, This was for you. Dan debated opening the package. This was for you? Huh. This was for you? What the fuck? Dan's thoughts all clamored for attention. Maybe it's anthrax. Maybe somebody sent explosives. How did this package even get here so fast? The mailman doesn't come all the way out of here till Friday. His trailer was his own. Sat down near the Tehachapi Pass, top Bear Mountain, near the dirt road crossing of Paramount Drive and Wilderness Way. Footstep up from Death Valley. Dan felt called here. He had bought a bunch of old radio station equipment before he fled Los Angeles and now turned on and shouting from the mountaintop with five shortwave antennas placed all over his acreage and across secret spots on Bear Mountain. Dan could shake, stick, and tell truth whenever he damn please. Dan figured that this way, truckers on the five and other seeker outlaws headed north just like he was, could get together and get people to hear the truth. His land was a few miles from the Tehachapi prison. No bother being that close to the prison. He figured, besides... If the truckers wouldn't listen, the prisoners would. They were probably all white collars and more in need of the truth as it was anyways if they were caught up in that prison, an overblown white elephant box of cells, a country Cadillac that took too long to build. Cost all the regular folk far too much in taxes. He fired a smoke and scanned again down the road, but saw nobody, no movement, no cloud of dust, no tracks down the bench gravel. His trailer kept the very end of the road, and if somebody tried to make their way through the wild brush farther on, they shouldn't last too long in that heat. Dan sat there, smoking, 106 degrees, debating the envelope, swatting gnats, counting his own beat. Fuck this. He tore it open and shook out the contents. One handwritten cassette tape, and one handwritten note on blank legal. He turned the tape over and across the blank white face of the tape was written, tape number one, 57 seconds. He held up the note to read. These tapes are holy seven pathway to all all light light and and being. being. They are a door, an opening, and the true revelation all renewing by fires and by trial and by the witnesses, all light and being revealed. Glory, glory, and glory. This This was was for you. you. You do know. Dan kicked himself out of his rocking chair. What in the flying fuck am I even into? He peeked once more down the road past his trailer and scuttled quick back in. So they're standing there in this field, middle of the night, dreary old English countryside, always rainy in Queens, England, in Rendlesham Forest, Radioactive meters all screwy. Wait, have I told you this before? Well, if not, do you want to know why you haven't heard it before? You know. They don't want you to hear about it. Wait, you mean they really don't want you to know the truth? Nah, nope. Dan dragged a parliament. That's lesson one. It's out there, but they don't want you to know about it. Come on, gang, I've already taught you lesson one before. Some people might call them space brothers. 
I've seen them flying around, right down the road, right down there over Edwards Air Force Base. White and green lights on the top, pulsing red lights on the bottom. I bet they're out there tonight. Keep your eyes out. Dan picked up the cassette tape and turned it over in his hands. Speaking of Edwards Air Base, last night I had a caller on the show. Maybe you heard him. Doesn't happen at all, ever really, getting calls, but, I mean, some shit, huh? Did you hear him? His phone was cracking up, left and right, all over. He had some message to say, but it was all broken up. Remember? Well, I'll tell you, folks. I'm damn sure the brass down there at Edwards was listening in, scrambling the phone signal so we couldn't hear whatever it was that caller was trying to convey to us. Dan slammed the laugh track. But we'll see who gets the last laugh. Today, I got a tape in the mail. Tape number one, 57 seconds, it reads. That's all it says. I don't know if they're just messing with me or what. I'll put it on. I waited all day to share it on air live for the first time in case it self-destructs or degrades or sets off a poison. You never can know, folks. They'll do anything. I hope all you out there are making your own personal recordings of these shows of mine. Tape over a tape if you have to. Now, here it is. Edward Zare, you Philistine fuck. Come try to stop me. Dan depressed the play button and a garbled tape sound wound upwards like opening a music box. Sounds of dark chants and scratching and suffering moans and shuffling sounds became clear. Something like a carnival barker shouting in the deep distance fighting the chant. It sounded like a horde was marching on, maybe being herded along by the louder voice What was that scratching sound? A heart had stopped the voices and brought about 20 seconds of white noise before stopping. Fucking kidding. Well, we all get played a fool sometimes, folks. Even me. He queued up Neil Young's after the gold rush and slowly dragged down the mic switch. The next morning, Dan walked outside to two more tapes laying on his doormat. Oh, no. No packaging, no sign of motion down the road. Tape number two, 22 seconds. And tape number three, 45 seconds. Son of a bitch! How could anybody get out here? He rushed inside and shoved number two into the tape deck. The sound of thick liquid a churning, bassy, low, undulating sound, like a slow, bubbling cauldron, like someone stuck a microphone under water. Tar, swamp, blood, what was it? Then 20 seconds of static white noise. Tape three. More sounds of deep, rushing waters, thudding and crashing against walls, flowing thick like a muted stream. Jump cut, 20 seconds of static. Dan's thoughts went at it again. The Russians are behind this. This is a test. This is clockwork. Some sensory sensory test. test. Dan held in his cigarette, forgetting to exhale. I have to do something. Can't just sit here. Dan's air traffic controller headphones bled out loud in the quiet of his trailer's main room. Lost deep in the song, Smoky Paul wavering between his thinning hair and the solitary light bulb above. Dan bopped his chin back and forth and aside and opened his eyes slow as the song faded out. Timely words from Barry McGuire's classic hit, Eve of Destruction, folks. Right on time, actually. Every day we get closer and closer to the end of it all. Dan heard his voice shaking in the headphones. Uh, you know, uh, how do I say this? (coughs) 
I'll just get right in. We live in between multiple realities, folks. That's a fact. Parallel universes, planes and dimensions and spheres, every existence ripples across other existences. What begins in one plane ends in another. Inhale and hold. And exhale. <sighs> Time is not a linear thing. What happens here happens there. There, here. You picking up what I'm laying down? All things inform the other. All of it. Whole timelines endlessly diverge and reemerge and spiral towards the greater end of who knows what exactly. That's the mystery. Along the way, we fight for freedom and, and we change the future. You understand? I don't think you do. Dan thought he heard walking outside. He pulled the blinds. This is the meaning behind the great pyramids of Egypt. They could travel easily back and forth across dimensions. Times, epochs, eras, whatever. They altered the very continuum of space and time. We have lost this knowledge, and I'd sure as hell like to find it again. Dan's fingers were tremoring wildly now. He tried to inhale his cigarette, but missed his lips. Call me apeshit if you want. I ain't. What we need is for everybody to wake up. We have all of us been asleep for far too long, letting them keep us from who we were meant to be, keeping our freedoms restricted so they can control, control, control! Cold coffee spilled across the control board as Dan slammed his fist on the console. We need an awakening. Maybe spiritual. Maybe it's celestial. Maybe we finally will decipher crop formations and unearth whole new messages. Time traveling is real. Connecting outside this world is real. How much more evidence we really need? Who knows? I can prove it. I just want to say that I got more tapes today. I won't play them right now. Whoever's sending them, I'll just say this. I'm on to you. Your time is up, motherfucker. I have no idea what this all is. Stay inside, gang. Believe me. Don't trust nobody. The next morning, three more tapes. Dan broke the hinge off his flimsy screen door, snatched the tapes off the ground in one hand, and stumbled onto the dirt road. What do you fucking want? What the fuck is this? What is this? Why me, huh? Nobody else? Nobody else? His voice echoed faintly down Bear Mountain. No signs of life or movement or response to his calls, other than a single diamond bag slowly shimmying its way across the dirt road leading away from his land. Who's doing this? Who's watching me? They must know everything about me. When I wake up, if I go to town, when my shows happen, he charged back into his trailer and listened through the new tapes, logging the audio. Tape number four, 14 seconds. Raging fire, panting, whispers, crackling, long exhales, static end. Tape number five, 31 seconds. Sounds like people making some kind of noise with their mouths closed. Painful sounding, like people chewing off their tongues or something. Static. Tape number six, five seconds. Hisses, shallow waters rapidly boiling off. Frogs mating. Large, ancient creatures making low sounds. Slowly, deliberately moving, shuffling together. White noise. Dan leaned back and let the smoke from his hand trail up behind him. The thoughts, the thoughts. I'm missing something. I've got through crazier shit than this. I've seen mysteries nobody's seen. Each tape distinct. No clear voices, no messages. What is the Holy Seven pathway? Why seven? Seven is a power symbol. I have six tapes. Are there only seven tapes out there? If I play them... Dan sat up straight. He grabbed his keys and jeans and sped down the mountain towards town. (laughs) 
His thrift shop scavenging was a success. Back again at home, he unloaded the boom boxes and other mini tape players he had scored, scattering them throughout his trailer. This is it. I know it. He reached into his stash box of batteries and began to drop them into each of the tape players, his hands slightly clumsy and shaky. His studio player, a couple of boom boxes, a couple of portable Sony recorders, and a Walkman with a built-in speaker. Seven tape players for seven holy tapes. He knew what he had to do. He put six tapes into six players. And the seventh tape player, no tape yet. Tomorrow, clockwork, in the AM, secret as thieves, they'll be back for sure. Still here, yes I am, still in your head, digging around up there, Dan Buchanan, still here on the mountain, way out here in America. (coughs) We waited out together, folks. Thank you. We know the truth will be ours. All light and being, holy seven pathway. We wait together. (coughs) Here, need a second. How about some real mystic sound? Dan grabbed his Zippo and lit. Since the first tapes showed up, four weeks were now lost. Tape number seven still never arrived. Cardboard does an okay job of keeping the light out. Hold up, cans of tuna, peas, and dinty more beef stew, anticipating Dan's 38 reposed on the studio console. I'm on top. I've seen it all. I have a purpose. I know. Whatever I have to do, I will do. I'll plug them if they come at that door. I know I've been away on air, folks. I'm so sorry for that, but I'm back. Everything is all right now, obviously, and I got plenty more to shout out loud. I've been out researching, traveling. You get it, don't you? You take vacations, right? Palm trees, pina coladas, white sands. Yeah, me too. Been doing that. He slammed a cockroach running across the faders. And the truth just gets stranger and stranger, folks. From where I have just been, it's secret, you know? I can't say where. I don't want them to know. Just trust me. (coughs) So, well, here's some news I'm sad to share. This October 23rd, Donald Trump will not be running for president. Contrary to what I predicted, I'm sorry. Guess you don't always hatchet land the bullseye. Mr. Trump said about as much yesterday in New Hampshire at the local chapter Rotary meetup. I really believe that this was it for us, a second coming, bludgeoning through the Potomac into Washington, D.C., ready to part the river wide and let us people march right up the steps. Instead, seems more day by day that this world is coming toward its real ending. Maybe some other traveler besides me, of course, will break on through from some alternate reality or time and raise up Donald once again to knock him out for us somewhere, somehow, the the universe will provide across time and planes of mind and reality and illusion. More than just me out there, obviously, I'm not the only one who cares. A single thud shook the aluminum wall outside Dan's trailer. Headphones fast off. He charged quick out of his post at the front door. Come at me, motherfucker! Outside, tripping over the buck brush on the west trailer wall, he stepped on an envelope. On the outside, handwritten, A witness, this was for you. Bring Bring the the white white wolf. One One minute, seven, seven, infinity. All at once, everything made sense. It was perfect. Dan began to tear up. He stared at the ground to steal himself. He had been waiting. He was ready. He was finally ready. He was right all along. He knew what he had to do. Out of the package tumbled tape number seven. Sixty seconds. He knew. That's it. The pathway. It's a countdown. Starts from one minute, 
in sequence, static aligns in unison. He boarded the door shut behind him as he ran in to jump back on air. Folks, folks, I have something to tell you. I figured it out about a month back about these tapes and, and why I've been getting them. There's a message here. Fuck vacations if you actually bought all that. I've, I've really been waiting right here by this desk the whole month. The studio player and these six other tape players that I put all on a table right here, loaded up, ready to play together. I have received the seventh tape. And now I know that this is what it means. He picked up his old stopwatch. National Watch Company. He wound it tight. We're going to count it all down tonight, together, all you out there. (coughs) Everybody, you and me, us. He slipped the seventh tape into the main studio player. And with all of the joy in existence, through a grateful tear, Dan pushed play on the console, starting the stopwatch at the same time. Five seconds down. He eyed his old stopwatch, each second hand an eternity counting. 57 seconds, sharp, QT50, play. Marching onward, with the whole tribe of creation, Dan wasn't just hearing sound, he was feeling frequency. He was floating, lifting. What's going on? 45 seconds. Toshiba Deck 1, play. The light overhead went out and on and out again. A rifle fired off down the mountain. 31 seconds. Toshiba Deck 2, play. Why is the ground shaking? Head pressurizing more with every second. Fuck, fuck, fuck. 22 seconds, play. Dan's whole trailer shook violently. Water lines burst, sending shards of window everywhere. Uh, I should get out of this. Let's stop, please. He hit himself. No. No, no, no. This happens. Fault line outside the hatch be's breaking open. God damn it, what's it called? Pale wolf something? This trailer spider crack burst into wild fishers. Knocking his boomboxes to the floor, his ashtray sent smoldering into papers under the desk. Fourteen seconds. Play. A sound was emerging from the tape noise. Dan wanted to stop it all, but... No, this is it. There was no turning back. This was his whole destiny. Every shout from the mountaintop had led him to this. He was born to bear witness. This is it. Five seconds. Play. The piercing howl of a feedback in bullhorn and an unknown language. Dan started chewing his tongue. Four. It is done, it is done, it is done, it is done, it is done. It is done, it is done, it is done, it is done, it is done. Three. It is done, it is done. Dan shook there, blinking straight ahead, ears and mouth pouring out blood. Why? Lightning. Hard hail. Seven winged lions. New dragons. Old scrolls. Many waters. He uncontrollably screamed when at last a mighty trumpet sounded and filled up the whole earth. All glory, glory and glory forever. And we've run out of time. For today, at least. Listen with the Lights Off was originally created by So Say We All in partnership with La Jolla Playhouse as part of their Digital Without Walls series and continues as a So Say We All podcast. 
All the stories on this show come from So Say We All Press's horror anthologies, Black Candies. Please do buy the books, available through our website, sosayweallonline.com. This episode of Listen With The Lights Off was produced and edited by myself, Jennifer D. Corley. Our intro theme is by Kurt Conan from AMFM Music. Our outro theme is by Daniel Schreer. And scoring and sound effects were created by our Foley Artist Authority, Scott Paulson. To keep in the loop with So Say We All, read more about the artist who made this project possible, and become involved as one of our future storytellers, visit SoSayWeAllOnline.com or find us being social on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, YouTube. We're even doing the Twitch thing. Until next time, I'm Jennifer D. Corley, and remember, if you find yourself feeling terrified and alone, there's probably a good reason. Now more than ever.